Hi guys, it's me Gwen. Welcome back to the channel. Now today, I'm going to talk about a test that took place on September 1st at 10.30 a.m. Okay, so uh, when I look at the recent tests, they're not really easy, they're not really hard, they're just moderate. So I think if you're preparing for them diligently enough, I'm pretty sure you can ace it. So let's look at all the parts one by one. Now part one, I'm going to read only one of the two passages and which is the first one, it's an in-flight announcement. So when you take a flight, normally they would say, welcome aboard, right? So this is it. Listen carefully. Welcome aboard flight 441 to Los Angeles. We will do our best to make your flight as comfortable as possible today. Now that everyone is boarded, we will be taking off shortly. Please fasten your seatbelts, put your seats up, and turn off any electronic devices until we reach cruising altitude. Thank you. Now, while reading this passage, I've noticed some words that keep appearing in an on-flight message. So I would see the word aboard a lot, but I hear a lot of students say on board, welcome on board. Or sometimes they would say not aboard, but abroad, abroad. You know, they look very similar. So when it comes to an on-flight message announcement, it's welcome aboard, welcome aboard. So make sure you don't get confused by those two. And when you're reading the flight number, oh my gosh, normally if it's just two digit up to two digit, you would say 19, flight 39, flight 97. But when it's more than three digits, you have to just cut them one by one. So it's flight 441, not flight 441. And some of the words are like comfortable. Uh, normally the natives wouldn't say comfortable. Okay, so the stress goes on the first syllable, so you have to say comfortable. You don't even have to say for, it's comf, comfortable, comfortable. So be careful with that. And the word shortly, I noticed some people might say shortly, shortly, but you don't say the sound T that clearly. Just make the stopping sound, which is shortly, shortly. Okay, oh, and when I'm talking about the stopping so sound, it happens again with the word seat belt, seat belt. So you don't say seat tu belt tu, seat tu belt tu. That's wrong. It's seat belt, seat belt. Be careful with that. And all these phrasal verbs like taking off, put up, turn off. When you say phrasal verb, you have to always emphasize the last word, which is the adverb. So it's not taking off, it's taking off. It's not put up, it's put up. And it's not turn off, it's turn off. Okay, so when you care be careful with those words, I'm sure these, you know, this passage is not so hard to read, but I would have to warn you, when it comes to almost the, towards the la end of this passage, the word is, the first starting word is please, and the last word is altitude, and that sentence is quite long. So you have to be careful when you're reading that whole sentence, okay? So uh, let me show it to you. Welcome aboard flight 441 to Los Angeles. We will do our best to make your flight as comfortable as possible today. Now that everyone has boarded, we'll be taking off shortly. Please fasten your seatbelts, put your seats up, and turn off any electronic devices until we reach cruising altitude. Thank you. Okay, so that was part one. We see the on-flight messages or in-flight messages all the time. So just get ready, just pre get prepared for by, by reading those you know words over and over again because we do see them all the time. We do get to see them all the time. It comes out repetitively, so make sure you get used to them. Now, part two is a very beautiful picture with two guys working together very happily. So I don't know what they're doing, but anyway, we only see two people in this picture. And when you see only two people in the picture, you have to be very cautious. You have to give every single detail or else you might not be able to fulfill the time. The answering time is 45 seconds. And normally when you have about three or four people, it's okay, but when you only have like one or two people, then it's really hard to fulfill that 45 seconds. So you have to talk about all, every single detail. So let me give you my answer and I'm going to time myself. Listen carefully. 
This is a picture taken in an office. There are two people in this picture. In the middle of the picture, there is a woman. Sorry, there is a man. He has a beard and short hair. He's wearing a red sweater. He's sitting down and looking at a big piece of paper. He's holding his phone in his left hand. Next to him, there is a man. He has short hair and a beard. He's wearing a blue shirt. He's standing up and pointing at something on that paper. Both of them are smiling. In the background of the picture, there are many things such as a green plant, a big window, and so on. And the room is very bright, and maybe they're working hard. Okay, so I talked about basically everything, and literally everything in this picture, right? I talked about the window, the green plant, the big piece of paper. I talked about every single detail, so I was able to fulfill that forty-five seconds. So make sure you talk about all the detail of the people there, like what they're wearing, how their color of the hair is, and like whether they have beard or not, red, blue, green. Use all the color information that you see in the picture. The pictures do appear on the screen in color. So talk about everything you see. Then you'll get good scores. Now let's move on to part three, and this time they're asking you every all, all the questions related to the internet. Now nowadays ETS they like to、uh, you know ask you questions or any topics related to the online activities, online shopping, online lectures. So you gotta get ready for that. And what I told my students today, just now when I was in my class, was I told them to take out your smartphones and you know just put on your screen, like turn on to the screen, the main main you know the background, and look at all the、uh, apps that you have there. And when you look at the apps, you can explain what you're doing with those apps. For instance, I have the Instagram app here. It means that I'm doing some like you know networking. But online networking, right? I'm posting pictures there. I'm posting my selfies. I'm connected with my friends, so I can say hello to my friends. Blah blah blah. And I also have oh TED. I have the TED app here, which means that I like to you know see some online lectures. I like to look at them. I like to listen to them. I can learn something there. So also oh here YouTube. I like to watch YouTube videos about cooking, about English, everything. So YouTube, it's a good way to watch videos, get information, and kill time too. So when you look at those things, icons of the apps that you're using, you can simply explain what you are doing online, right? So I think this is a good way to prepare for the test, just to brainstorm what you're going to talk about. Now I'm going to time myself while answering each question. How often do you use the internet, and what kinds of devices do you use when using the internet?、Um, I use the internet once a day because I can get lots of information on the internet. It is super convenient. I usually use the internet on my smartphone, and I can use the internet wherever I want with it. It's fascinating. So when I was saying it was it, it's fascinating, you know, I would like to mention something about this because when I talk to my students or when I hear my students talk、uh, talk or, you know say their answers, they always say, "Oh, it's good," "Oh, it's nice," "It's it's good," and some might say it's great, but that's it. That's the limitation. That's all they can say. That's how they express good. So I tell them try to use some other words. It doesn't have to be like whole bunch of words, but you could use the word super. It's super, or you could say it's great, fantastic, fascinating, awesome. That's very commonly used. So try to use more like words. Try to show them that you know like more words than just nice or good. Now the second question says, do you use the internet at a cafe? Why? Mm, sure, I often use the internet at a cafe because they provide free Wi-Fi service. Also, I can charge my laptop computer while using the internet at a cafe, and I think it is super convenient. That's why I do use the internet at a cafe. Now, notice how I was speaking for seventeen, almost eighteen seconds, which means that my answer would have been already cut off if this was a test. But you know, it's better to keep on talking than to stop before like fifteen seconds. Like some people, I see, um, you know, they see the timer going down, and when they only have like two, three seconds remaining, they would just freeze, and they would stop talking. But it's better to keep on talking, whether you get cut off or not. Okay, so 
you can at least fit in one or two more you know, words or even a sentence within the time remaining and who knows you're gonna get a better score okay just keep talking now what kinds of activities do you usually do with the internet online lectures online shopping or social media oh I have <laughs> I have so many things to talk about each and every one of them but I'm gonna talk about this now I like to do online shopping with the internet I can buy whatever I want moreover I can save lots of time so I do it often for example yesterday I wanted to buy shoes but unfortunately I didn't have time to go to a store so instead I did online shopping all I had to do was use an app on my phone and I was able to compare many things and I was able to read lots of reviews and finally I was able to place an order for my shoes. Okay, again, I spoke long, longer than 30 seconds but still I kept on talking and you know, it's better than to stop earlier. Okay, so guys, before the test, what you have to do is you have to brainstorm what you will be talking about certain topic, okay? And when you're at the test, just like talk about everything you could possibly think of and that's the way to do it. That's the way to take the test. I mean, in real life, it's better, well, I don't, I, I'm, I'm quite talkative, but in real life when I'm with my friends, I'm not really talkative. Uh, this is a lecture. This is like lecture. I'm here in front of camera. I'm on YouTube. If I'm not talking, nobody's gonna be talking so I have to keep talking talking and talking and talking but that's how the test is if you're not talking on the test nobody else will so you gotta talk 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 for your own test okay now moving on to part four here on the top I see Beverly Hills Art Society and upcoming classes which means they're gonna show you some classes it says beginners or uh, beginner advanced that's the level and on the right side you see the venue the word venue I mentioned it several times it's the same word as place and on the bottom as as always as usual you see the registration fee information so that's what you would have to prepare for like read them out for 45 seconds and I always tell you guys during that preparation time of 45 seconds don't sit there silent you have to read not in loud voices but you have to read some of the words the numbers you know when you're reading that word like May 27th May 23rd I know some of you might have a hard time reading those numbers in English so make sure you say them not loudly but try to make little sounds reading them okay now this is the first question related to the chart which is question 7 how much does it cost to register for a class mm, and we know what to say uh, it'll cost $50 for one class and if you register for two classes it'll cost $100 please keep that in mind now uh, it'll cost it'll cost you have to remember that three word it'll cost okay it c comes in front of the you know price information and for one class or for two classes I use the preposition for but some people might raise their hand and say teacher when do I use PER per okay this is how you use it it's either it'll cost fifty dollars for one class or it'll cost fifty dollars per class so you have to understand how the word per includes a oh, or number one already. So you cannot say it'll cost $50 per one class. That's wrong. P-E-R, per, already includes the meaning of one. So you cannot say per one class. Got that? Now the second question. Uh, last year, your organization held an oil painting class for beginners at BH University. Will you do it there again this year? Now, there are some uh, bits of information that you have to compare. It's oil painting class, beginners, BH University, which is not true this year, right? So I would say, actually, no, oil painting class for beginners will take place at California Youth Center, not BH University. Please don't forget that. Now, for... um. Some people like me, I would remember the word BH University that I heard through the message. So I would say 
Oh, it's going to be held at California Youth Center, not BH University. But some people who are not, who have like poor listening skills, I'll put it that way, poor listening skills, then they would have a hard time remembering that word, BH University. Then you can just talk about the things that you see on the screen and tell them it will be held at California Youth Center. All right, and lastly, uh, question number nine, I work until 5.30 p.m. Are there any classes that I could take after that? So 5.30 is when the person gets off work. So, there are two. On May 4th at 6 p.m., there will be a water painting class, and it'll take place at Hilltop Academy. On May 27th at 6 p.m., you can attend a sketching class. It will be held at Hilltop Academy, too. Now, both of them are beginner classes. Please remember that. For that sentence where it said, both of them are beginner classes, you can either say both of them are beginner classes or you can say both of them are for beginners. Okay, so you can e use either one of them. Okay, one of, both of them are beginner classes or both of them are for beginners. So this time part four was just an okay level. It's not so hard. It wasn't so easy. Some of you, if you hadn't seen it before the test might think, oh my gosh, I didn't study this kind of chart. Well, now is the opportunity to study and like get to know how you say the answers. So try to look at the video over and over again and try to figure out how to say that those kind of information um, correctly in English grammar, English sentences, okay? It's very important that you make out the right sentences in using the right grammars for this part. Now I'm gonna move on to part five. And part five is always about listening. You have to listen to the information given in the, um, in the message. So I'm going to read this to you. And this is going to be like a British Gwen. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do it right. But anyway, I'll speak in um, my version of the British accent. So it sounds different. Okay, listen. Hello, I'm Scarlett Patton. I manage Huntsville BBQ Restaurant. Perhaps you have heard about the new menu items that my restaurant will be offering. My staff and I decided on the new menu and I found a print shop to make copies of it. We just got the copies that the print shop made for our restaurant. There's a problem with them though. I made a mistake and sent them our old menu to copy. Our restaurant is holding a big promotional event soon and I'm sure that lots of customers will be coming to eat here during the event. I don't want them to feel disappointed about the menus. I have to think of a way to get the new menus ready. That's why I decided to call you and ask for some advice since you also run a restaurant. What would you do in this case? How would you prepare the new menus for customers? Please think about the situation and get back to me. You can reach me at 555-2345. Thanks. Bye. All right. So how was that? I feel very uncomfortable every time I speak in British accent because I am not used to it. I just sort of like, you know, imitate, mimic what they do. But anyway, the person is working in a restaurant. They're, you know, creating some new menu items for the whole like, you know, new season of the restaurant, I guess. But they made new menus. They made wrong copies of the new menu. So that's a problem, right? They have the new version of the restaurant with the old menu. So what are we going to do? What are we going to do? So this is my answer. I have to speak for one minute and this is going to be the Gwen Lee version, American English. Hello, this is Gwen. I heard that you are the manager at the restaurant. And recently, your restaurant made new menu items and you will hold a big promotional event for that soon. However, there's a problem because you made wrong copies for the new menu. So you'd like to get some help with this matter. Well, first of all, I'm sorry to hear about the situation. However, I'm happy to say that there is a way to help you out. And after looking into the situation, I came up with the following suggestions. Well, first, I think it is a good idea to call the print shop and rush them to reprint the copies. That should be possible. And also, why don't you write down the new menu on the whiteboard? That should be helpful too. Well, those are my suggestions. And if you need more help, just feel free to call me back anytime. 
Bye. Okay. So exactly, I spoke for almost like exact one minute. And the way to do that is you gotta memorize the template. Okay. The template is the tool that makes you, you know, uh, say right amount of, you know, the things that you have to say about summarizing the message and right amount of, you know, things that you have to say about proposing the solution. So it's all designed there like this, this much. Oh, uh, there's a motorcycle passing by. And it's, it's just about this much and you memorize it and you can talk efficiently for one minute okay so i'm pretty sure at this moment some people might say so where's the template where's the template where can i where can i have a look at it so guys open your eyes wide here it goes okay so that's the template you have to use that's the one that you're going to be memorizing it's going to help you a whole lot so that you can talk for one minute endless non-stop all right now lastly part six the question is do you agree that it is not a good idea to work with family in the same company why or why not give specific reasons and details to support your opinion now you don't honestly have to talk, think about your own experience i say this over and over again for part three or part six you're not going to talk about your reality you don't have to do that you can always create a story so what i tell my students in my classroom is that they have to have like some like pieces of stories that they can talk about for each and every kind of topic and if they have those little stories they can add up sometimes edit and create their own version of the story at the test site so before you go take the test you might as well think about some stories related to like some topics that are dealt in part six like they always like to talk about your company working experience or your business experience or like you know being abroad kind of experience so you have to make up story before the test if you want to talk about it at the test and I always tell you guys, for my working experience, I always talk about me working at the company called ABC Company. I always work in the marketing department. And whoever I work with, the guy's name is Tom. Okay? The guy's name happened to be Tom. And Tom happened to be, this time, my brother. Okay? So, I'll show you how I made up my own version of the answer using the, that story. So, here it goes. I agree that it is a good idea to work with family in the same company. There are several reasons to support my opinion. And most of all, it is helpful. For example, last year I graduated from college. And fortunately, I got a job at ABC Company. I worked in the marketing department. And there, I met a nice supervisor named Tom. And actually, he was my brother. He wanted to teach me many things, so he pointed out my mistakes. At first, it was so annoying, I even thought about quitting my job. But as time went by, I got used to it, and my brother, Tom, had lots of experience, so I was able to get lots of tips and advice from him. And sometimes, I even asked for help after work. So thanks to my brother, I was able to learn things quickly, and it was very helpful. That's why I think so. Okay, so notice how I just kept on talking, although the time passed one minute, because it's better to keep on talking than to stop before, you know, one minute. Okay, remember that. Just keep on talking. That's the motto. That's the thing. That's the attitude you should have when you're taking the test. Every second counts. Every second counts, and you're paying for every single second, so you got to keep on talking. And notice how that Tom is my brother, and everything, the, all the stories remain the same. I added actually two expressions there. I said, he wanted to teach me many things. He wanted to teach me many things. Being my brother, I guess he wanted to teach me many things. And I said, one more thing about that. He pointed out, you're wrong. This is wrong. You can only do this. This is wrong. He pointed out my mistakes. He pointed out my mistakes. So basically, those are the only two sentences that I, I added to my original story. And everything stayed the same except for the fact that Tom this time was my brother. 
Okay, so I'm done talking about the test that happened on September 1st. And like I told you in the beginning, the tests are not that easy, but not that hard. It's just moderate. If you prepare for them, I'm pretty sure there's a high chance for you guys to get level 6, 7, or even 8. Recently, I got a direct message on my Instagram telling me, uh, from one of my international students saying my YouTube channel helped her a lot achieving level 7170. So she thanked me a lot for these videos. So I feel really happy that I'm creating these videos in English. So not only my Korean viewers can watch, but my international like friends out there are watching. So anytime when you need any kind of help regarding like TOEIC speaking or English studying, let me know what kind of videos that you want to see me making and I'll help you out with that too. Until then, see you next week. Bye-bye.